Have you ever felt like following a daily calorie budget, but you didn't know how to figure out how many calories were in your home cooked meals? If this sounds like you, then stick around. Hi, I'm Dr. Morali, internal medicine doctor and obesity medicine specialist. And this is Dr. Morali Weighs In, where I weigh in on topics related to weight management drawn from my own lifelong struggle with weight as well as my professional experience as an obesity medicine physician. In today's video, I'm weighing in on how to figure out the amount of calories as well as other important nutrition information in the food that we make at home. Meal prepping or meal preparation is where our meal planning actually comes to life and plays a central role in helping us stay on track with our daily calorie dose. For more information on how to figure out what your daily calorie dose for weight loss is, please check out my previous video on that topic. A common problem that many face when trying to stick to a daily calorie dose is that oftentimes fresh ingredients in our home cooked meals don't come with nutrition labels and we don't know exactly how much of each ingredient is in a single serving, plus we make different foods from day to day. Some of us might think that a solution to this problem is to consume mainly prepackaged foods or frozen foods, anything that has a nice, neat nutrition label on the package. While this is an advantage in some cases, there are a few things that we should consider. First, most of the time, companies will usually add things to prepackaged foods that either help them taste better or last longer. And this usually involves some combination of sugar, fat, and salt. Sugar and fat both add calories to the food without adding a lot of weight to it. And so therefore you get less food, but more calories. For more on how the weight of our food helps us feel full, check out my previous video on calories in versus calories out. Salt can cause higher blood pressure and also causes us to retain water in many cases. And really, who wants that? Second, I'm a big believer in the idea that if you really want to lose and maintain weight loss, then you really need to know what is in your food. And the best way to know that is to actually touch the ingredients yourself rather than trust a food company. Third, whatever you do to lose weight should be pretty much the same as what you're doing to maintain weight loss. If there's a really big difference between those two things, then you're probably not going to maintain your weight loss. Think about it. How many people do you know who have lost weight and maintained that weight loss for years or decades eating mainly prepackaged foods? Meal preparation is a skill that all of us really need to pick up if we want to lose and maintain weight loss for a long period of time. And fourth, preparing your own meals makes you feel successful because you're investing time and effort into yourself. At the end of the day, in order to change our behavior and maintain that change over time, feeling successful is really essential. So now that you're convinced that you're gonna start prepping your meals, how do you actually know that whatever you make is going to be staying within your calorie budget? The good news is there are lots of apps for that. A very common one is MyFitnessPal. It's very popular because it's got a, a large library of foods and meals in it. It's also compatible with lots of devices like activity trackers or weighing scales. And plus, it's got a great recipe feature. Using the recipe feature of the MyFitnessPal app, you put in all the ingredients from your home cooked meal and MyFitnessPal will put out all the same information, including the calories that you would normally find on a nutrition label on a package. I would recommend adding recipes to your MyFitnessPal app the next time you're making a meal that you would probably want to include in your meal plan. This way you're adding recipes as you go. I'll be demonstrating how to use the app using my iPhone. It might be a little bit different for Android users and I can post the instructions for Android in the description below. For this demonstration, I'm actually going to make a butternut squash soup. As I mentioned in a previous video, soups and stews can be great meals 
when we're trying to manage our weight. This is because they're often very filling with less calories, especially if the majority of the ingredients are coming from protein and vegetables. I'll generally use this soup as the vegetable component of my meal, and I'll often freeze portions of it for future meals, and then when I'm ready to eat it, I'll add the protein of my choice into the soup. I especially like this recipe because it's simple. Generally, I like to make recipes that have five ingredients or less. For this recipe, you'll need butternut squash, onion, olive oil, water, and seasoning. Let's get started by opening the MyFitnessPal app. If you don't have an account already, it's very easy to sign up. So let's first navigate to the recipe feature in the iPhone version of the MyFitnessPal app. For this, you just go to the bottom right corner and click on the three dots labeled more. On the next screen, you select the feature labeled meals, recipes, and foods. Tap on that. That'll take you to the next screen and then you go to the very bottom and it says create new recipe at the bottom of the screen. You wanna tap there. Next, we get a prompt that says add recipe, basically asking us what kind of recipe we wanna add. Do we want to add one from the internet or do we want to add the ingredients manually? We're going to select add ingredients manually. And now we are going to create the new recipe. And so you just want to create a title for the recipe you're making. In this case, we're going to make uh, butternut squash soup. So that's what we're going to call it, butternut squash soup. And then it's asking for us to, to define how many servings the recipe makes. You may not know exactly how many servings it makes and will actually, after we make the dish, you can measure out the total quantity of the recipe and how much it makes and then figure out the actual number of servings. But for now, we're just going to guess that um, our recipe makes four servings so we can uh, go to the next the the next field and then tap add ingredients and so generally I only include the ingredients that adds calories to the dish um, in this case it would basically be the butternut squash onion and olive oil and here you can search in the MyFitnessPal's library of foods to add each ingredient and the um, serving size or the the measured quantity um, that's going into the recipe so first, we'll add the butternut squash. And there are lots of, lots of options here when we type in butternut squash. I'm gonna choose the one that reflects the serving size quantity of 100 grams. After selecting this, we can enter the number of servings to reflect the quantity we measured. So we measured that we had 1,477 grams of butternut squash, which is uh, a little more than three pounds of butternut squash, three and a quarter pounds. So we can either divide 1,477 by 100 and enter 14.77, or we can see what other options they have. So there is a one gram serving size option. If we select that, then we can enter 1,477 grams as a serving size. We don't have to do any math. Just put, put exactly what we measured into that field. And then next, we do the same process for the yellow onion. So we measured out that, uh, in this case, it's 528 grams of yellow onion. And so we select the yellow onion, enter this, that serving size as 528 grams. And then finally, we add the olive oil, which is two tablespoons of olive oil. And with that, we are done. All the, the, the ingredients that have calories have been added and we can start to make some soup. The first step that I do here is I toss the onions in olive oil. Normally, this recipe calls for three times the amount of olive oil here in, in order to saute the onions for the soup. And that would add a lot of calories to the dish. So what I do is I found that I can just toss the onions and a smaller amount of oil, and I'm able to cut the quantity of oil um, by a third and uh, basically have the same effect. It doesn't really impact the taste. So I just toss the onions in the olive oil. And then next, I saute the onions on medium heat for about 10 minutes. And then once the onions are, are browned up a little bit, 
um, we can add the water. So for this recipe, it's six cups of water. And then we also can just add the butternut squash and then the seasoning. For the seasoning, I use some salt and some herbs de Provence. Uh, so nice little uh, earthy flavors there. So you just put it all in there, add it all in there. And then the next step is to increase the heat until the soup is brought to a boil. And then you lower the heat once it's boiling, lower the heat uh, down to low or medium low um, and allow it to simmer for about 20 to 25 minutes. Then I blend it up using a hand blender. Uh, quick safety note, you never want to put anything hot in a blender canister and then blend it as it can build up pressure and then burst. So um, if you have a hand blender, you can use that or allow the soup to cool and then blend it. So I have two six cup Pyrex containers laid out here. And since the soup fills both of them to the brim, that tells me that I've made 12 cups of soup. Now that's a lot of soup and I can now freeze two cup servings in plastic containers for, for future meals. Now I can return to the MyFitnessPal app and edit the serving size. So if I decide to make the serving size of my recipe one cup, then I simply go back, edit the recipe, and change the serving size from four to 12. And then I add the measurement of the serving size to the title. So that way I don't forget what the actual measurement of one serving is uh, if I come back to this recipe later on. So it's already there in the title. So one cup per serving. So finally, I have the calories and the nutrition information of this, this wonderful homemade soup. It's 138 calories for one cup serving size. And then we have all kinds of information in terms of how much fat and carbs and protein as well as other nutrients including fiber so there's 8.3 grams of fiber in one cup of soup which is great the sodium is probably not accurate because I did not add the salt to the ingredient list so if you track your sodium you probably would want to add the salt um, into the recipe. I didn't do that because it doesn't add any calories to the, my end dish. And now that you know how to do this, you can just repeat this with any other meal that you make at home that you would like to include in your meal plan. And MyFitnessPal will figure out the amount of calories and the other nutrition information for all of your, your home cooked meals. So just to summarize, remember you just follow these five easy steps. First thing is to name your recipe and guess the number of servings. Second is to measure out your ingredients. Third, add the ingredients into the recipe feature. Fourth, measure the total quantity made by the recipe and decide on a serving size based on that quantity. Fifth, you want to edit the serving size according to how much you have actually made once you've made the recipe and add the serving size measurement to the title. And there you have it. It takes a little bit of work up front to add the recipe into the app, but once it's there, you can keep using it and integrate this nice home cooked meal into your meal plan. So that about wraps it up for this video. In my next video, I will show you how you can actually isolate the protein from milk. There are a lot of meat shortages nowadays because of coronavirus, etc. And so I thought this would be a useful thing for all of you to learn. And as always, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. This channel is really meant for our community to stay well despite the challenges of coronavirus and beyond. Thank you. Mm -hmm.